Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another example video on this beautiful channel. Uh, today we're just going to make a working working uh, dynamic array, like I said before, and we'll actually have a menu-based system for it. So basically I'm just going to do the same thing I did last tutorial, but actually make a menu for it and make sure that we can add some, some string stuff. So this time we'll do some string action here. Uh, so for that we're going to have to include string. I just want to show you a different version of this. Then that means we'll have to change all of these um, variables here. The string. Alright. Just find them all. It's like that. Element as well has to be string. Okay. So there we go. We have that. And uh, if you want to know how to create this, I won't go into super detail this time. Uh, if you want to know exactly what I'm doing, you can go ahead and watch the, the previous video. But I'm going to go through this a little more quickly this time. So uh, just you can follow me and, and program and you'll see what happens. So initialize, basically we'll go from to cap and we'll just initialize everything. Um, so we'll say from cap array alright initialize that expand so if you remember the steps uh, the first step was increase capacity and I always multiply mine by 2 and then the next is to make a temporary array oh whoops uh, with the new cap and then to copy over things from the old one so number of elements because we don't want to exceed the old ones index max index uh, which it would do if we used cap because we just increased cap and the last array is not that big so uh, we use number of elements um, position i uh, whoops temp er at, er at position one <laughs> i uh, equals position i so we show we got everything over. Then the next step is to delete array. And the final step is to, or the ne ne last final step, next to final is uh, r equals temp array. To actually give over the pointer, uh, give the pointer the address to this new array we created. Do never, never delete temp array because that is the new one you created. It's just holding the address to it. And the actual pointer will disappear later, but your old pointer will get the address to it after it deleted all the old data. Uh, it will be pointing to the new larger array with all the copied stuff in it. So, uh, yeah, never delete temp array. And then we'll just initialize um, from number of elements cap array. Okay, we'll initialize everything. So we have expand, add element is if uh, larger cap, we'll expand it with, okay, just like that. And make sure it always expands. And in the end, we'll just uh, say that array at position plus equals element. So that makes sure we add something and this makes sure we always expand it in case it's full and then we'll always add this. So this will always be added no matter what. If it's full it'll expand it first and then add it. Otherwise it will just add it. And uh, get at, well last time I tried to do this with a exception and uh, uh, cool cool guy in the comments, a really nice person uh, actually commented why it didn't work so I'll try to do it again this time. It was just my if statement that was wrong. Uh, I used the wrong operator there. Instead of or, I used and, and that uh, was a problem. So get at, we'll see here, if, okay, string data equals bam. If, uh, let's just say return, okay, if something than this, then we'll return data. And this has to be string. And it has to be a string and index. Okay, so if uh, elements with index is larger or equal to number of elements or index 
less than zero, we have a problem. So throw out of bounds. Okay, and we'll catch this as a C string outside. We'll try this time. This was the problem I uh, we had last time. I tried to do this, but that's not correct. This should be it. So index, if it's larger or equal to number of elements, which it shouldn't be, or, or if it's less than zero, we throw this. Otherwise, we'll just return data. And data should be, well, else data equals uh, array at position index. Then we know that index is a good value that we can just straight up uh, put in there. So let's do that here as well. Let's use these condensed. I like those more actually. Uh, we can use condensed versions for everything. Uh, there we go. Okay, so this should work. This should work. What we'll do is we'll actually make our array here. So uh, integer cap equals 10 integer number of elements equals 0 and then a string array uh, cap whoops equals new string cap. Just like that. And then we'll delete array at the end. Um, actually we'll we'll delete it here. Or I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll keep it there. We'll delete and then it'll pause it. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Whatever. Um, but we have our big thingy here. And we have our stuff here. And we'll just make a void print all function here. Um, elements. Let's make a constant reference to that. Let's make a string array. Pointer. Now let's just do four number of elements. See out. Array at position i. Okay, so this will just print everything out for us. Um, I could do this. I could do this as well. Just stick with our palette here, or our, the way we're doing our template. So that seems good. Okay, now while, okay, we're going to just add cars to a list. So that's our actual array. Array. This is going to be menu stuff. So int choice. Okay. Well, choice. Um, it's larger than zero. Let's keep going. Mm, okay. So here we're going to do our menu thingy. So we're going to have a uh, menu. OK, and we're going to have an int choice. And we're going to actually make our menu now. So we're going to do it in a function here. And let's see, let's just, uh, OK, so we have that. Okay, so we'll get in choice, and here we'll just print out what we want to do. So zero, quit. Okay, we'll just do this. Okay, one, two, add, add, and three, zero, add, and this will be print. Okay, and we can actually just try to do get at okay so we'll do this or actually we'll eh, we'll see we'll see we'll see about that one but uh, this is our menu and it will let us choose the thingy and then every time that happens we will let's see switch choice case zero nothing. Oh, we don't even need a case zero, actually. Um, case one, case two. Break that, and then default break. Okay. So, actually, in default, we might not have to do anything. We'll just, we'll just say C out. 
bad choice. I know. Okay. Uh, brah. Brah. Choice. Brah. So there we go. All right. So we got our default. We got our two cases. And we got everything ready to go. So what are we going to do? Well, case one is going to be add. So uh, depending on what we do here, we'll have to do a get line name of car. Okay, then we'll do get line sin. And we'll have to do a temporary variable here. We'll have to do a temporary variable here. So what's going to happen is string name. Okay. It's like that. And we'll have to get in some name to that variable. So when we have that, we're going to say add. Add, add, add. So add element name to array to number of elements Oops. and we'll have cap here as well so we have to send in all of these into menu because it's not a class and we have to we can't just send in one thing here we have to send in all of these things so what it's going to do is we're going to send in string array we're going to send in integer number of elements and an integer cap okay so we're going to have to do this and we're going to have to do this since we are going to be able to change things in here. It needs the actual references. And we'll do this. So there we go. That makes sense. And we'll add that. And actually, in the function add elements, we'll say, well, here we'll say array expanded. Just to make sure we know what's going on. And here we'll say, Added. Okay. It's like that. And what else do we do? Well, choice while. Wow. Here we go. Okay. So, choice array cap. And what else will we do? We will up here. We're going to have to run menu once. Just see what's going on and of course every time we use sin we have to use a sin dot ignore all right so I will save our get line and stuff and the second one was print so we're gonna have to say print all uh, number of elements array so there we go it's gonna print everything and we are pretty much done let's see if this works now Bunch of stuff. Let's see if quit works. Oh, it went into default because. Uh, let's see, just one second here. Menu, case, zero. Program. Okay. There we go. So, quit work. At least it worked. Yeah, it worked. And we'll do add. Volvo to print. So Volvo was printed. Okay, so one add one more. Say Ford. Focus. And then we'll print everything. And we got both of those. Now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to do this just to make it nice. Okay. And that line. And that line. And another line. And and the line. Just to make sure that we have it separated. So see we have it separated. Now we'll say add Volvo and then if we print it it will be separated. So we can just keep adding stuff here. Uh, something something whoops oh well that wasn't <laughs> my intention but let's see let's do this. Let's make it one. The size of one first. So it's gonna be two after I add. So one add something and let's print that. It added something else. 
So element added array expanded, right? So it's, we see we're seeing it's working here, and it printed too. So in this way, you have a working dynamic array with something else being. I mean, like with a menu and stuff is stuff is working, you know. And you can add stuff to it, and you can keep going. When this is a class, when we actually make a class for this dynamic array, we can't. We don't have to specify or a template class. Actually, we'll learn about that soon. Uh, we won't have to specify which type we want it to become from the beginning because we can just do that at the time of creation. Here, like you have to be bound with this uh, one array here. But if you have a class that you created with all these functions and a template, uh, it will be able to become whatever you want. And you can make several versions of the same array that can be used for different types. So uh, that's the beauty with, with a vector, you know? Like if you, if you create a vector, um, let me just do that before I end the video. Include vector, just to show you. Because that's basically what we're making here, a vector, uh, dynamic array. So if we say vector, you know you can create vectors for anything, like an integer, int vec. You can create a vector for a string, a vec, or whatever you want to call it. So you see, you can do it for different types. You can create a vector for your own class types. You can create a vector of a vector, all right? So you can do vector, integer, string. You could do that, you know, and you can keep making this is a multi-dimensional actually uh, array so uh, we're not talking about that right now we'll be coming to that soon but yeah this is about it I mean you can create vectors for any type and that's the type of thing we want here with a string array our whole dynamic array here that we're working with is just done for strings because I defined that from the beginning if we do something like this we'll be able to have a specified type in here and we make it we can make our own and you're asking why should I make my own vector if vector exists well that's a good question well first of all it teaches you like a whole lot about pointers to create your own vectors and your own dynamic arrays um, and the secondly some things in the vector aren't necessary so you can customize and create your own version of it and uh, and work with that so yeah i hope you learned something and thanks for watching as always and i'll see you in the next video bye bye